The recent tragedy in Aurora, Colorado, has sparked a good deal of debate about gun control in America. Uh, to be clear, I'm in favor of allowing firearms to be owned here, uh, mostly because removing all firearms from American society would be a practical impossibility. Guns are here to stay. But there are two arguments presented by people in favor of looser restrictions that I find to be, on their face, absurd. Um, really, it's essentially the same argument with a slight variation. Simply put, it is argued that if guns were easier to get and more prevalent, the tragedy and others like it could have been averted. The variation is in how this is accomplished. In one, it is argued that armed moviegoers would be able to take action of their own and end the incident. In the other, the prevalence of weapons uh, serves as a prophylactic measure, preventing Holmes and others like him from enacting their plans in the first place. I'll begin with the former. Let's examine this situation specifically. Can we really say that adding more weapons to a large group of panicked people confined in a dark theater uh, filled with tear gas in which muzzle flashes are now coming from multiple locations would hurt less people? How can this claim be taken seriously? Even an experienced soldier or officer would have trouble hitting his target in this situation. And even if they were successful in bringing down homes quickly, their success wouldn't stop panicked civilians from discharging their weapons more indiscriminately. The idealized view of this tragedy being halted by a group of calm, collected, well-trained shooters is naive at best, and downright delusional at worst. The second version of this argument, uh, that the fear of running into armed opposition would prevent criminals from attempting attacks, uh, hinges on the notion that were it easier to obtain a weapon, there would be more of them out there. And, and on the further notion that recognizing the possibility of running into someone with a gun is enough to keep criminals at home. James Holmes was able to purchase four firearms, one of which was an assault weapon, in less than 60 days, and nobody even took notice. How much, how much easier does this need to be? James Holmes was intimately aware of just how easy it is to get your hands on a gun, and that didn't stop him. Uh, further, the fact that he purchased body armor demonstrates that he at least expected some kind of armed opposition. Uh, this claim is clearly ridiculous. Uh, further, even if I am incorrect, and both of these arguments are accurate, there will be situations in which firearms are misused, and innocent people will die. I do not think it can be argued that the presence of assault weapons would make these situations anything but more devastating, or that the absence of assault weapons would not mitigate their effects. I am in favor of reasonable gun restrictions with a common sense way of keeping track of how many and how quickly firearms are purchased by any given person. If, in the name of safety, we can keep track of how much Sudafed is purchased, we can do the same for guns. Further, I see no reason that the average Joe should have access to assault weapons. They serve no purpose in our society. Now, now, we have no problem deciding what weapons the public can or cannot own 
We cannot own tanks or bazookas or miniguns. We have no problem drawing that line. So, so this discussion is not about whether we should draw that line, but where we should draw that line. And I have yet to see a single compelling argument in support of access to assault weaponry for the general public. And there is clear reason to oppose such access. Finally, I have heard it said that this is not the time to be having this discussion. That, that people are attempting to politicize this tragedy to push their own agenda, and that they shouldn't be. I couldn't disagree more. The most important discussion any tragedy of any kind can initiate is a discussion about how to prevent that same kind of tragedy in the future. To me, this emotional appeal is the underhanded political move. And this is demonstrated by the fact that this appeal is made nowhere else. If, after a devastating and deadly earthquake, uh, a discussion was started about how to make buildings less susceptible to earthquakes, and people be began to promote research and the use of certain building materials, uh, would you say, oh, no, 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 don't talk about that. Now's not the time. It's offensive. <laughs> Clearly not. So why are people saying it now? I would assume that it's because they have something to lose. This discussion attacks an ideal that they support, and they don't want to deal with it. Thanks for watching.